The USS Enterprise 1701D is an updated and evolution to the original USS Enterprise 1701 from the Star Trek media franchise. The next generation occurred in the 24th century, 78 years after the venture of Captain James T. Kurtz and the Starship Enterprise. Under the command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard, it is in the main setting of Star Trek, the next generation, and served as a Starfleet flagship for seven years. The Enterprise 1701D retained the signature of Mass Jeffrey design from the original Enterprise, a saucer and engineering section, and a pair of engine nacelles. Artist Andrew Probert was in charge of redesigning the Enterprise D, which was an update to Matt Jeffrey's iconic 1960 Enterprise design, depicting a ship supporting a larger crew on a longer mission to boldly go where no one has gone before. With a total of 42 decks, the Enterprise D was twice the length and half eight times the interior space of the Constitution class ships over the century earlier. She carries a combined crew and passenger load of 1,012. For comparison, the original Enterprise 1701 is about 288 meters or 947 feet in length and is about 88 meters or 289 feet in height. While the 1701D is about twice the size, it measures about 642 meters or 2,106 feet in length and is about 195 meters or 640 feet in height. However, when comparing to the Boy Cube, it's actually quite small in size. The cube volume is about 27 cubic kilometers and spanning more than 3,000 meters on every side. So how fast is warp speed? The current speed of light is around 299,792,000 kilometers per second, which is similar to warp speed 1. In this current demonstration, it takes light about 5 hours and 28 minutes just to reach to Pluto, which is about 3.6 billion miles away from the Sun. At 5 warp speed, which is about 213 times faster than warp speed 1, the same trip to Pluto will take about 1 minute and 30 seconds. The 1701D has the maximum speed of warp 9.2, but can travel up to 9.6 in emergency situation for 12 hours. As we take a closer look, we can see the captain's yacht, the main navigational deflector dish, and the photon torpedo launcher. The navigation deflector is a component installed on many starships, and was mainly used to deflect space debris, asteroids, and any other object that may potentially be dangerous. The captain's yacht was named the Calypso, and was intended for a diplomatic missions, such as transportation of dignitaries and ambassadors. At the top of the 1701D was the bridge. The bridge was the main command and control facility of the starship. Commanding officer and first officer were often positioned on the bridge. At the back of the ship, or secondary hull, was the warp engine nacelle and main impulse engine. The warp nacelle was an outboard structure found on warp-capable vessel. Vessel with warp drive will typically have two or more nacelles. The warp coil in the warp nacelle creates a subspace displacement field, which warp the space around the vessel and allowing it to travel faster than the speed of light. An impulse engine or impulse drive was a common propulsion system used on Starship. The Broussard's collector was a device usually attached to the fore end of the warp nacelle. It allowed Starfleet to use magnetic fuel to collect interstellar gas molecules for the use as fuel. The 1701D has the ability to disconnect from the primary and secondary hull and was used in case of emergency or tactical maneuver. The ship have about 42 decks, but due to time and resources, I have only managed to focus on deck 1 to 4, 10, 34, 
and 38. Let's start with deck 1 to 4. At the very top of the vessel was deck 1, which was the bridge. The bridge was the nerve center of every starship, and it was manned by top officers of each department except for engineering and medical. On the bridge were the conference room, technical console, and restroom. The conference room was where the senior staff or military leader could conduct meetings in various conferences. In addition, there were also the ready room and science station. In the ready room, the captain could engage in administrative work without interfering with the bridge operation while having instant access to the bridge in the event of a crisis. The science station was normally occupied by the science office, which was the senior staff position. On deck two was the officer's quarter. First was the Lieutenant Commander Data's quarter, Lieutenant Commander LaForge quarter, and the crew lounge. In addition, there were Lieutenant Commander Wolf quarter, atmosphere system, and lifeboat. A lifeboat, sometimes known as escape pod, was a small craft used to escape from a vessel or facility during a catastrophic failure of an onboard system, external attack, or threat. As we head down to deck 3 and 4, these decks were dedicated to the shuttle bay. The shuttle bay was a facility on the starship where the shuttlecraft would launch, receive, store, and maintain. Most shuttle bay were equipped with a tractor beam emitted in order to facilitate the landing procedure. On deck 3 was the flight crew lounge and the shuttle system programming. On the center of the shuttle bay was the shuttle bay control room and view balcony. At deck 4 was the main shuttle bay, internal cargo elevator, and the main computer core data trunk. Furthermore were the shuttle fuel and dock, the shuttle maintenance low bay, and the crew's quarter. The Type 6 shuttle was a modification of the full-size Galileo type shuttle built for Star Trek V. It could hold up to two crew and six passengers. The Type 6 was designed to be a short-range shuttle and was classified as a light shuttle with the ability to travel at warp speed 1.2 to the maximum speed of warp speed 4. The RCS thruster quad or reaction control system with a standard thruster used by the Federation for low velocity propulsion. Depending on the facility available, their rank and their length of services, these quarters may vary from a shared cabin to a personnel suite with bathroom, living area, and office space. The holodeck and the holodeck high bay was a form of holo technology designed and used by the Federation Starfleet, which ran holographic programs. When a user experiences a holographic environment, the holodeck wall could generate holographic image that appears to extend for a limited distance, seemingly much larger than its own dimension. At the center of Deck 10 were the main computer core and stellar cartography. The computer network of a starship is based around a system of redundant computer core that processes data of all ship's system. Every single system, from light support to weapons, and shielding depends on the computer core. Stellar cartography was a field of astronomy dedicated to collecting and analyzing data in order to make maps of the star system and planets. One who specializes in this science is known as stellar cartographer. As we head further back of deck 10, we can see the gas flow accelerator and saucer impulse engines. The impulse drive was essentially an augmented fusion rocket, usually consisting of one or more fusion reactor. In close proximity to the impulse engine were the antimatter storage pods and lifeboat. The 10 forward was situated at the extreme forward end of the saucer section and was designed with several large windows, which offered a spectacular view of the space ahead of the vessel. 
The turbo lift or turbo elevator was a device that provided rapid transport with both vertical and horizontal transportation for personnel. As we head to Deck 34 or the engineering support, the ballast core flight article and the computer core can be found here. At the front was the main deflector dish. It was a component used to deflect space debris, asteroid, particle, and other objects that might have collided with the ship. To calculate and navigate through space, the deflector signal processor performed calculation during flight. The atmospheric physics lab combines the component of physics and chemistry that focus on the planet's atmosphere. Toward the back was the upper reactant loader and the launcher gas generator. Located at deck 36 was the main engineering room and the lower reactant loader. The engineering primary purpose was to be the center point for control of all engineering systems aboard a starship, especially those related to propulsion and power generation. The lithium crystal chamber was a component in the starship's warp core that contained the lithium crystal. The lithium is an element, a member of the hypersonic series, and was a critical component of warp drive. At the center of Deck 38 was the warp engine core and the warp power transfer conduit. Commonly, warp core utilized matter antimatter reaction to produce the required energy to achieve warp speed on capable starship. The warp power transfer conduit was a vent type of plasma pipe used for carrying warp plasma from the vessel's warp core to the draft nacelle. As part of the main deflector dish, the main deflector field emitter was a device that emits charged particle. The chief engineering duties ranged from making the roster for engineering personnel to advising the captain on possible solutions for a certain technical problem with the vessel. The USS Enterprise D was destroyed in 2371 after an attack by the renegade Klingon. Although the saucer selection was separated before the breach, the force of the explosion caused the section to crash on the planet Valinian 3. This is by far the most extensive technical 3D animation to date, and I want to thank Jason William for helping me sort out the facts and data. So what are your thoughts and opinion on the USS Enterprise 1701D? I'd like to hear your comment, and if you have any other suggestions, let me know. In addition, if you want to see all the schematics on the 1701D, I will have the link on the description box below. As always, if you want to see more technical 3D animation, check out my playlist on the right hand corner. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.